This is the first of a series of videos um, that are heading us towards um, understanding and using the Laplace transform. So in this video and the next one, we'll, um, we'll look at some things that you're already familiar with that hopefully will get us um, primed and ready to go for understanding the Laplace transform and how it works. So let's start off with the uh, familiar concept of a function. And let's just look at a simple example that we're familiar with. Um, so let's take the example of the function f of x equals x squared. Now what you can think of a function as is you can think of this function as a machine. And all it does is it takes in a number and gives out a number. So I'll put the name of the machine f here. And for instance, if 3 was to go in, then we know 9 would come out of the machine. Okay. And we also use the notation, uh, if we want to be abstract and not use a particular number, then what we say is that if x goes in, then the thing that comes out is f of x. And of course, we sometimes refer to the f of x as y. So x in, y out. And y is also uh, indicated by f of x, meaning that f has worked on x. So. Um, the key thing to remember about a function here is, I mean, there's, there's some technical details, but basically it's a machine and it takes a number in and gives a number out. And that's basically the gist of it. Now, we, can, we, we describe the function uh, with this description, which helps us to understand how the function works. But we could just as easily um, describe the function, how it works, to some extent, by giving a table of inputs and outputs. So we could have f or x and f of x. And then um, we can give an x value, like say, for instance, 1 goes in, 1 comes out, uh, 2 goes in, 4 comes out, 3 goes in, 9 comes out, and so on. So this right here gives us a description of how the function works. So let's just put a box around that. that. That tells us how it works in the sense of giving us inputs and outputs. Now it is a little limited in that it only tells us the outputs for a particular set of inputs. Now this function f of x is uh, equaling x squared is fairly nice because we actually understand how it works. We could, we could create this table just based on knowing what the operation of squaring involves. But we could have some other function, let's say g of x, that might be something like, say, the natural log of x. And I don't know about you, but there aren't very many numbers x for which I can be given the value and then know the natural log. Um, so, um, the natural log is quite a bit more mysterious than x squared, but we could do the same thing as we did for x squared. We could create a table of values. Um, when x equals 1, it turns out the natural log is 0. Um, I know that one, but now I need my calculator to help me out. The natural log of 2 is 0 0.693 and dot, dot, dot. It keeps going. The natural log of 3 is 1.098 dot, dot, dot. So that's not rounded correctly. It would be 1.099 if I rounded, but uh, it carries on like that. So I could describe the, the function, the natural log function, by giving a table of values. But if this was all the bigger my table was, then all I would know the natural log of would be 1, 2, and 3. Whereas with the function f of x equals x squared, uh, even though my table only gives the values of the function for x equaling 1, 2, and 3, I can calculate uh, the function values for other values myself. Okay, so anyway, that's, that's the general idea of a function. Let's remember again, it's a machine. It takes a number in, gives a number out in a sense. So now let's go on to things that we call operators. Uh, 
And an operator, an operator is a machine as well. Right? But the difference between an operator and a function is that the, the operator takes a function in and gives a function out. So um, an operator that you're quite familiar with, this may sound like a new idea to you, this idea of an operator, but you know of an operator that you've used before. And the operator I'm going to use is the derivative operator. I'm going to indicate it by d dx, which means take the derivative with respect to x. So um, you know that if I was to put in, say, the function x to the third, that what I would get out would be 3x squared. Okay, And you know that from some of your basic calculus. So um, notationally, what we have is something like this. If we have the derivative machine, so d dx. And so if we have uh, the thing that goes in is the function f of x, which we'll also say is a y then the thing that comes out is a y prime, uh, which we also denote as dy dx, which indicates that the y has been worked on by the d dx, or f prime of x. So obviously, uh, you've seen all three of those notations. So an operator is something takes a function in and gives a function out. And again, the most uh, common operator you're used to is the derivative. You could also think of the second derivative as an operator. So if we were thinking of the second derivative, then we'd have d squared, dx squared. So if we were to put into that x to the third, then the output would actually be the second derivative, which would be 6x. Or if we think of the input as uh, y equals f of x, then the output would be y double prime, which is equal to f double prime of x, or d squared y dx squared. So that's an example, uh, another example of a uh, um, of an operator. And since this is a differential equations course, we ought to mention the fact that we can actually create new operators by com combining various operators. So, for instance, I could define an operator D to be the second derivative plus, say, uh, 5 times the first derivative plus 6. Now, what does that mean? Well, if that's an operator, it's supposed to work on a function, so I need to tell how it works on a function. And so I'm going to pick a function y and say that the, the way d works on y would be to apply all this stuff up here to y. So that would be d squared dx squared plus 5 d dx plus 6 applied to y. And what I mean by that is actually apply the two derivatives and multiply by 6. So this would be d squared y dx squared plus 5 dy dx plus 6y. Okay, so that's what dy would amount to. So for instance, if I wanted to do d of, say, um, sine 2x, That would be the second derivative of sine 2x <clears throat> plus 5 times the first derivative of sine 2x plus 6 times sine of 2x. Okay. So in this case, it would be the second derivative of sine 2x turns out to be negative 4 sine 2x. And then uh, I forgot in here, I missed the, uh, the 5, so there should be a 5 right in here. Okay, so then we take the derivative of 5 sine 2x, which turns out to be uh, plus 10 
cosine 2x and then plus 6 sine 2x. And of course we can combine the sine terms so we end up getting 2 sine 2x plus 10 cosine 2x. So if we wanted to, to draw a picture of what happened here, what we have is we've got uh, basically this operator that we're calling D. So this is D. And what we just found out is that if we put sine 2x into D, that what comes out is 2 sine 2x plus 10 cosine 2x. Okay, so that's another example of an operator. In the, uh, that concludes this video. In the next video, we'll go on and uh, talk about an important property that operators have called linearity.